Hi, my name is Diamond. I live in the U.S. and I want to introduce you to Pastoral Care and Leadership Institute, whose vision is to equip Christians with sound biblical truth at the comfort of their homes. As you join Pastoral Care course, you will learn how to study the Bible and draw contextual interpretations to God's Word, and your ability to communicate the Gospel will be enhanced. I am inviting you to join the next online course. To register, please follow the link below or send us an email at pastoralcareleadership at gmail.com or send a message on WhatsApp. Thank you. The greatest communicator is God. And as Christians and believers, communication is very key. So I'm excited that we are here today and we are going to be looking at certain things that I believe the Lord we used to challenge us. And yesterday, no, on Tuesday, we, we, we looked at some few things around that, about listening exercises that we did and all that. And we began to see um, how people create problems unnecessarily because of their view about listening. So I believe that as we continue on this communication school, you are not going to just learn about the Bible. You are going to learn so much about life itself. Because for you to be an effective and a great leader, you must learn the act of communication. So the foundations we are laying on communication will help you become not just a better parent, it will help you to become a better pastor, to become effective in communicating with people around your community. So we are going to be looking at the different blocks. We'll look at listening. We'll look at it briefly today because we have established listening. Then we'll look at the basics of communication, which is something that uh, is crucial. All through this school, when you understand this foundation that we are laying today, it will guide you through. It will help you to be effective in all the assignments you'll be giving to. So you're going to understand that there is the basis of communication and there is a way to establish rapport. A lot of people have issues with establishing rapport with people because uh, most times we, we don't know how to connect. You know, people are always thinking, they said, I'm not social, I'm not this, I'm not that. And in people trying to connect, they connect, they connect in the wrong way. So establishing rapport is very crucial as a preacher and as many of us that are, that are on, that God has given the privilege to do uh, teachings and preaching online, we must learn the act of establishing rapport the act of engaging your audience to make them want to listen to you. And these are things we are going to be dealing with in this um, course. Then we also be looking at um, how to present a message. And this will be dealt with properly in the public speaking week, because in this school, we are going to have public, public presentation. So you are going to learn the skill and understand the dynamics of writing a speech. So these are things that we are going to be dealing with in this communication class holistically. Then we, we also look at how to, how to ask questions. You know, some people, when they ask questions, they, they answer the question and they ask the question, they answer it and they ask again. You know, some people don't know how to phrase their questions. So we'll try to, to help you see how to ask questions because the way you ask questions also reveals your level of understanding. So you are going to be looking at how to ask questions, not only how to ask questions, 
you will also learn how to take questions how to take questions because if you don't if you don't learn how to take questions your question and answer time can destroy the the powerful presentation you may have made so we looked at some basic things on tuesday about listening especially the looking at the importance of listening that everybody wants to speak everybody learns how to talk but the truth is that the foundation of communication is listening. And we also express a thought on Tuesday, which I believe most of us will always remember that you increase your influence through deep listening. We, you increase your influence through deep listening. It means that that if you want to grow in your leadership, if you want to grow in your influence over your children, if you want to grow in your influence over your husband, it's not talking that makes you grow in your influence, it's listening. A listening wife gets to influence the husband. Do you know why? You know, when you listen to people, you get to know what is in their hearts. When you listen to people, you get to know what their challenges are. See, listening is, is one of the ways you can get to the hearts of people. But most times we are being um, um, uh, taught that the more you talk, the more people get to, to, to follow you. There is, there is an aspect of talking, but listening is very crucial. So you, you, when you practice the act of deep, deep listening, it does not only gives you influence, it, it, it shows wisdom. You, you receive wisdom and it displays wisdom attributes in you. So it is very crucial that we get to know these things as communication students. Because in this school, you are going to be getting feedbacks you're gonna be asking questions. Now, if I ask, for example, can I ask a question? Hello, are you there? Can I ask a question? Can I ask us a question? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Good. Now, um, on, on Monday, most of us were in that orientation class, right? Now, if I ask Sister Charity, what is Sister Precious' best, best color? She mentioned it that day. I think she, she said black. She said black. And green. Black and green. Yes. Huh? You said pink? Yes, sir. Yes. Which one? Huh? Which one? <laughs> Black, black, pink, and, and green. I think she said, yeah, she said something like, uh, black is her, uh, I think is black is her favorite, Daddy, but I'm not okay. sure, please. You're I not think. sure. Okay, good, good, good. Now, 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 before our call sister faithful, probably she, she has the, the answer. The essence of this school is to make you to be a deep listener, that if you hear something, you can, you can articulate it. Some people have it as gifts, but, but you can learn it. Because some of us, we are too casual when we are listening to people or when we are observing people. You know, there is something I, I admire. Sister Facebook, please, I'd like you to say something. What is that, uh, what, what did she mention? She said she doesn't have any favorite color. Okay, Sister Precious, you are here. What is your favorite color? What, what did you say that day? I said I don't have any favorite color. Okay, now <laughs> somebody's giving you black, yellow, and pink. <laughs> or black, black, pink, and this. Now, okay, now. now I now, was thinking now. it's Precious best, Dad. <laughs> okay, Precious best. Okay, Precious best said pink, right? Yeah, but I know Precious. She said she don't have favorite color, yes. Okay, now I, I said precious, all right? Now you, you said you were thinking it's precious best. It's also a challenge in our listening. 
We don't listen for information. We listen and we give answers according to what we think. I'm just getting at you because these are the things that it's not just to know, know, know all the definition. You, you get all the slide that, are, that from now, you, you become somebody who is very, very sacrosanct with listening. You are sacrosanct with information. And if you are that kind of person, people will always come to you to get feedback. The reason why... Oh, somebody is calling. Now, the reason why why most of us have gadget is because we save information there. And it's very important that the world system is looking for people who can keep information, who can give the right information. Now, there was a day I discovered the importance of not just listening, of being observant. And what happened was that I entered a vehicle, a public transport. When I took the public transport, my phone was on my hand. I was actually re receiving a call. But when I was done with the call, I, I dropped the phone on my lap and completely forgot myself that the phone was on my lap. So when I came down from the vehicle, my phone dropped. I didn't remember, and I stepped out of the vehicle. The driver moved. Do you know, when I remembered like, like three minutes time, I said, oh, my phone is, is in that bus. I was trying to think, what can I use to identify that bus? It was a very painful experience. I said, so I was trying to think, when I entered the bus, did I, did I even observe anything? I didn't observe the plate number. I didn't even observe the, 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 the driver that was driving. I can't even tell if it was fair or dark. I can't even tell the color of his shirt, even the, the, the bus conductor. I didn't have any, any clue. Ha! I said, man, that, 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 from that day, I started saying, this is wrong. I'm supposed to at least, when you get into any place, you are supposed to have what they call the eye of a researcher, the ear that is deep in listening. There is something I, I admire in the life of, of uh, Edda James, Pastor Faith's husband, is, is this thing I'm sharing with you. I discovered that he has it, and I say, Lord, I need, I need it. Because... I can meet with some persons. Sometimes they come to church, we talk, and, and after discussing, I may see them outside the church environment. I can't even remember. They will start saying, Are you know Pastor Jude? I'll say, Yes, yes, I'm Pastor Jude. They'll say, I, I, I came to one of your meetings. I, was, I will be scrapping. Sometimes it makes me look foolish. Sometimes it also makes me look as if I'm proud. But honestly, I, I am praying, even though I'm teaching, I'm not there yet, all right? I'm praying to be able to articulate information that, that I receive. Some of us say I'm old. It's not about old age. It's about our perception. So Edda James is somebody I have seen manifest this great virtue. If you tell him something today, and you ask him 10 years time, he will, he will give you the exact word. I think there was something that happened last year while they were in Nigeria. We, we were discussing about Sister, Sister, Sister OK and the husband. And I think we were waiting for them. Yeah, they were to drive to come and meet us somewhere. So as we were discussing, he was saying that a, car, a vehicle was coming and Pastor Faith was saying, is, is that not the vehicle or something like that? He said, no, 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 that's not the vehicle. He said, is, he, he gave the description of that vehicle up to the alloy rim, up to the rim of that vehicle. When he was saying it, maybe Pastor Faith can bear witness to this. Yes, I that have been seeing 
I have been seeing that vehicle. So they came to, to church with that vehicle severally. I have never looked at the rim of that vehicle. He was saying it emphatically that I know the vehicle. is so and so color. Is this? Is is so? This this how the rim. And shortly after that time, um, sister sister okay husband drove drove in, and I looked at it. I said, God help me, help me. Now this is something we, we want to achieve. That it's not just to say I've done masters in communication. I know the definition of communication. Is it in you? Are you that person who is not who is who is not who is careless with information? People are talking to you. You don't listen. You just you just hear them. We are trying to say that let us grow. It will increase your influence. So if there is an argument, I said this. You said that. We can say let's ask ask Ed James. He was there, and when he comes, he will tell you what you said, it will tell you what you said, it will tell you your response. It may not be part of the discussion, it's an ability. But what I'm trying to say that we all can learn because it will save a lot of stress and it will make us more relevant and influential. Because when you don't grow in this direction, your certificates will not make people want to follow you. It is what you have learned through it. So like the diagram I showed on Tuesday, you can see that this man gained more influence because he wasn't talking, rather he was listening. He was listening. So some of you who are married, you want to influence your husband, you want to influence your children, please let them be talking to you. Stop talking. Talk less. If you want to really know the state of the heart of your children, of your husband, just ensure that they are talking to you. Because your talking makes them to know what you are thinking. You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? Out of the abundance of the heart. So sometimes they said, when you are joking, you know, somehow, somehow the truth will surface. Oftentimes, when you are also annoyed, your, your, your true picture of things will also surface. So wisdom is communicated in your ability to listen. It's not also to listen to thoughts. I'm not saying to be quiet. You know, some of us say that, uh, says that uh, silence is the best answer given to a fool. No, you are, you are not just being silent because, no, you are listening and you want to get to know what is being said to you. So the, the question is, this is what everybody wants. When you take the other side of it, you discover that you become the great leader. Everyone wants to be seen. Everyone wants to be heard. Everyone wants to be understood. Everyone wants to be the one talking. So there are people, they will never understand you. Never. They, but they want you to understand them. As you are bringing your point, they'll say, no, 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 no. Just wait, just wait. Listen to me first. All they, all they have in them is what they have taught. So if you are coming with even a better understanding, they will quash it. So you must understand that if you want to influence your audience, listen to them. Look at the feedbacks. And that makes you a great communicator because that's a foundation. So we hearing and listening are two different things. Uh, like, from the, like from what you can see from the slide, and hearing is when the sound wave hits your eardrum, which is a passive thing. So if you talk to people, try not to be passive, please. All right, I'm learning and I'm still learning. So you, you can do better. Then number two, listening is an active process involved, that involves processing of information. So if somebody is talking to you, try to process the information. Because when you learn to process information, it makes you to remember things that you are hearing, things that you are, you are receiving, whether you are observing things or not. When you process things, it makes you active and it makes those information to stick, to stick. And when, when it sticks, even if it's 20 years time, you can still say, say it 
the way it's being said to you. Now, what is listening? In summary, so listening is um, the absorption of the meaning of words and sentences by the brain. So your brain is involved when you are listening. All right. This leads to understanding of facts and ideas. Now, when you talk about listening, all right, it's, it is beyond the information you are receiving. It is when the word comes, you process it. Let me go back to um, what happened in the first scene now. Now, I said, and um, give us um, Uh, in my mind, I was thinking Eshot Gehamazi, right? Now, but in our sister's mind, all right, she 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 was thinking of pressures best. Okay, now who do you blame? I have to, I have my blame. And she also have a blame in this matter. Now, if if I really wanted her not to have an option, I would have said. Precious Gehamazi or Precious in master's class. So most times when people don't listen, it's part of what we are going to be discussing. So the problem is not always with the listener sometimes, it's also with the communicator. So, so she has an option. When I said Precious, if she was a deep listener, she would have said, which of the Precious are? Is that correct? Now, when she says, when, she's, when she asks which of the pressures, then I cannot direct her to say, the pressures I have in my heart is the pressures in this class. So when talking about listening, it means that you, you, you are processing the words. You don't jump into response. Many of us today uh, are having problem with people and with the, it looks as if we are not intelligent. It's not because we are not intelligent. It's because we are poor listeners. Because people who are poor listeners, they speak out of point. And when you speak out of point, it means that you, your understanding is low. It means that your, your understanding is shallow. So listening is a powerful tool. You may not know how to talk, but if you know how to listen, you will be considered as a man of wisdom because men of wisdom have few words. All right. Now, there are various stages of listening. The first stage, we just put it hearing. Hearing is when the sound wave hit your eardrum. Then we have the second stage, which is the focusing on the message, not the person. Focusing on the message. Now you say, ah, I know what it means. No, I know Pastor Jude, when he says this, this is what it means. No, that's a wrong way to, to listen. It's better you listen to what Pastor Jude is saying. Because if you listen, if you if you want to, to, to assume, because you know this person, when he made this statement, I know what it means. You are you are not you are you are no longer listening. You are already assuming you know what he wants to say. So you must focus on the message, focus on the information. Precious is precious. All right, I don't want to assume. If, I don't, if I'm not clear with the precious, I say, which of the precious? Is it the precious in this class? Or there is another precious? So sometimes if you are a good listener, even when you have a, a poor communicator, you are able to get the best out of it. But in this school, you will be taught how to communicate effectively, but we, we are starting with, first of all, learn how to listen. Because you are not gonna find people who can, who can communicate effectively every time, all right? So sometimes you can actually have a meeting with a very, intelligent doctor, but who is a poor communicator? A doctor who has information that will save your life, but he does not communicate effectively. So if you are a deep listener, you are able to draw understanding from all that is saying, and you leave that place with a better understanding than every other person. Beloved, 
if you truly work on your listening ability, I guarantee you, you will hardly fail any exam. You will hardly. So listening, it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's another aspect of listening, which is comprehending and interpreting. Now, to comprehend means to, to, add, to add the information you are hearing. Comprehension. It means that you are trying to understand something. Now, interpreting it has to, has to come in after you have been able to, to comprehend. You have been able to understand it. And when it comes to the, the next point, which is analyzing. Now, when you are, when you are analyzing what you are hearing, you also need to understand the point of evaluation, evaluating what you are hearing. Okay, if pastor said precious, which precious? What are you doing? You are comprehending, you are analyzing, you are trying to, to analyze, all right? Okay, now, probably you have analyzed it and you don't have the opportunity to ask me question. You cannot evaluate it. You understand? Possibly, uh, it cannot be precious best because precious best is not in this class. Probably, it should be the precious that is, that is in this class. Then you ask your, so what you are doing now, you are evaluating what you are hearing. Could this be true? Then res responding, you see, is what confirms if you have listened well. So most times when we ask for feedbacks, the way you respond tells us if you just kept your put on your Zoom and you went around doing your dinner or your supper, as the case may be. Because what you will say will always not fit in. Because most times when you try to be intelligent, you not become a fool. So, so you, you cannot, you cannot respond appropriately if you do not listen accordingly. So when you listen well, it becomes easier for you to remember. Remembering becomes something that you do naturally because you were analyzing what you were hearing. Now, some of us that are in this class right now, if you begin to assess your relationship with people, assess some things that you try to actually remember most times, you discover that you didn't really pay attention. That was it. But if you pay attention to information, it is easy for you to remember. Now, five basics, basic reasons we do not listen. There are reasons why, why people don't listen. Number one, listening is, is hard work. So listening is not easy. You know, for some people, as they are listening, they are just sleeping. They will tell you, I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you, but they are sleeping. So people don't want to listen because when you are talking, oh, you are using enough energy, but it's not as hard as somebody that, that is listening. Then listening, everybody is in competition. Everybody is looking for who to listen to them. Why are people committing suicide today? They will say, nobody listened to me. Now, there is this rush for action. And another reason why people don't listen is that they always have something to say. They, 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 they always have something to say. Now, the patience to want to really listen to the person speaking is not there. That's why it's difficult. They want to act and speed in differences. This one is also very, very, very true. You know, some people are fast talkers, while some are slow talkers. To depend on the, the, the speed of your communication. All right. That is who they are. So when they now find somebody who is talking slowly, they get disconnected. All right. Because in their temperament, that person is too slow. So for them to listen to that person is like, they cannot really listen. Now, what we are saying in this class is that you, you should be able to listen to everybody, whether they are slow talkers, whether they are fast talkers, whether they are speaking, uh, speaking in their accent, you should be able to listen to them. That's what makes you a communicator. A communicator 
would 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 listen to to a broadcast all right amongst other people when the communicator starts giving feedback people will be wondering did you hear all this from this speech you say yes so some people because of the speed differences they don't listen so it's a hard work then lack of training thank god you are here in this class you are going to be trained please the essence of training is application so when people are not trained then it becomes difficult for them to listen then let's look at four types of listeners you will find there are many more but for the purpose of this class we are looking at four we have the, the non-listener we have the marginal listener the evaluative listener and the active listener now you can hardly find active listeners except that person has been trained active listeners you find them in the law court when they are about to give a sentence active listeners you find them when they are about to announce the winner in an election but in a daily conversation most people are not active listeners so what we are saying that in every conversation you engage in in every class you find yourself in any meeting you attend be an active listener now a non the non-listener is that person who just hears he's not concerned about the information then we have the marginal listener the marginal listener is that person who listens to what he or she wants to hear let's say you go to uh, a program and now they are telling you today we are going to teach on on financial wealth you say no 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 no. i'm not here for that i'm here to to learn about prayer so whatever the person will say about financial wealth you are not concerned you are a marginal listener because you you have put your listening capacity into a box so when it comes to they are teaching on prayer oh all your ears are open you want to hear it you want to write all the scriptures down you want to read it now you find marginal listeners often in the churches when you quote a bible verse that they like they will open to it if you quote the one that they don't like they will never open to it they will just say please next one in their mind so we have evaluative listener people who listen and begin to evaluate what you are saying and comparing it evaluative listener is that listener who doesn't just take what you are saying out of context he evaluates the context in which you are making a particular statement he does not assume all right he wants to evaluate to see if what you are saying is in the context of 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 the information that is that is in his or her disposal how to improve your listening skills how do we improve it Number one, maintain eye contact with the speaker. Some time ago, we discussed this. And for those of us in, in the continent of Africa that grew up in Africa, it's a big challenge for us, except for a few persons, because we, uh, we, we don't look at people eye to eye because it's, it's, it doesn't communicate respect. All right. So uh, our own way of cultural communication of respect is not to look at the eyes of others. So when people look at your eyes, it's either they are daring you or they are suspecting you or, or, or they, they, they find something wrong with you. So eye contact is always a big challenge. So we, we in Africa, we have to learn this. We have to learn this to, to make eye contact. All right, then face the speaker. We're trying to show you how you can improve your listening skills. So don't be that person whom, like now you are in class, we're trying to say on your, your camera. You know why? When you on your camera, it makes you to be more active because you are sure that, oh, my camera is on and somebody is looking at me. So even if you are feeling sleepy, it first of all kills that, that weakness in you because you know you are on set. So try to face the speaker. If you are on Zoom, try to look at the slide. If, if you are, uh, are on Zoom, try to, to, to be attentive or look at the speaker. If it's the speaker or the slide, you can look at the image, then focus on content, the content that you are receiving, not the person, not the speaker. Avoid selective listening. Like I said before, 
Don't choose what you want to hear. Avoid distractions. So distractions can come in different ways. We'll talk about that later. Distractions can be internal. Distractions can be external. So respond appropriately. Say yes or not. You know, these have given me a, a lot of openings. All right. When someone is speaking, it's good you respond. All right. All right. Do not be preoccupied with your own thoughts. That is one of the reasons why people don't listen. When you are thinking, you know, when we do practicals or, uh, or presentation, all right, when it's time for you to present, you don't even listen to what somebody else is saying. You know, sometimes when we do, do our book report, all right, when somebody is presenting his or book report, you don't even listen. All you are doing, you are focusing on your own. By the time they will ask you to ask, ask the person's question, you are now moping, right? You must learn to listen to people because what they say might be the breakthrough you will need even tomorrow. So there are techniques that can help us. Techniques. These techniques are broken into three um, structure. We have paraphrase, we have summarized, and we have question. Now, to paraphrase is to restate what was said in your own words. Now, this is something very, very, very symbolic when it comes to communication. Now, if I said to um, Helena, for example, Sister Helena, and say, Sister Helena, please, can you help me get a pen? I've given her an instruction to get me a pen, right? Now, if she wants to paraphrase that word, all right, then she has to use the keyword. The keyword in what I've said is get me a pen. So if she wants to paraphrase that word, is to say, um, Jude, did you ask me to get you a pen? Because because if the word pen is not there, all right, or, and she says, uh, did you have me, to, maybe she said, did you ask me to get you something? No, she has, she has not paraphrased. She has only said it, said what she think. But the key word pen is very crucial. So when you're talking about paraphrasing, it means that you are, you are saying something that the person has said in your own words, all right, but not to change the object, not the main object right now. You can change some, some other things, but the main object must be intact. Please take note of that because you may hardly find that in, in different books, but this is very key. So when people paraphrase, sometimes they change the whole thing. At the end of the day, you are saying something different. Then summarize. It means to put together the main point of the speaker. So if, if we say, for example, after the lecture has gone, can you summarize uh, the 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 uh, the lecture on on listening? All you need to do is to look at the main points, the differences. Now, if I want to summarize what I've said so so far, what I will use to summarize is is just this. I've talked about um, these ones are not too important. The difference is number one. I talk about the differences. In communication, I talked about what is listening. Then I talked about the various stages of listening. And now I talk about the five basic reasons why we do not listen. Then I talk about four types of listening. And now I, I, we also talked about how to improve your listening skills. Then the techniques of active listening. What I have done is that I have summarized with the main points. So every other information that has to do with uh, the non listener, marginal listener, I don't need them. It's just the heading the, the, that I need to summarize the main point. Now, when you are talking about summary, you must first of all listen to know the main point. That's the only way your, your summary can make sense. So, is to get the main point. Then we have the last part of it, which is the question. Now, questioning is not to go and ask questions outside what the, what the speaker has said. You are assuming. 
that somebody made a statement, you are assuming that's what that statement means. No, you rather want to ask, you would rather want to challenge the speaker. You rather want to challenge the speaker to further clarify. For, so for example, uh, I said, give me viral. All right, now you want to ask a question. The question you need to ask that, what do you mean by viral? It's not that you say, does viral mean a uh, 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 book? No, you, you are not You are not to explain what viral means. When I say viral, for some people, they know it as pain. For some people in, in, in our country, Nigeria, they know what viral means. Viral is the brand of a pen, is the is a special name, is a name for a company that, that produces pen in Nigeria. So when somebody gives you an information, you that you you don't just try to explain, you try to ask to, to clarify. To clarify means you are asking questions to know if what the person is saying is exactly what you are thinking. But first, you want to ask the person to clarify. And that is why you must suspend judgment. Don't conclude. Conclusion is always what is bringing problem in communication breakdown. So I'd like us to take a break here. I know we're supposed to take a break by, by eight, but let's take a break here. Now, this break, we're going to have questions. Okay, so I'm going to send us into breakout session. And, uh, and I send you to your breakout session. Please, you can snap this, snap this, um, this information. This is the information you are going to discuss in the next 10 minutes of your breakout section. So I'm going to put you on a breakout session now. All right. So while you are there, you, you, you will respond to this question. What you are responding to, what do you appreciate about people listening to you? Who, what do you appreciate about people who listen to you? Then the next one is what have you learned so far?